introduce and then we will start okay uh, good morning all of you welcome back to day five session first of mpb on the behalf of yashundra mosley polytechnic i would like to welcome today's resource person dr sv choudhury sir welcome sir in a today's session Saudhari so, sir discuss about the simulation of concrete using abacus. First of all, I would like to introduce today's resource person. Dr. Saudhari sir is a working as an associate professor in a Thakur College of Engineering and Technology, Kandivli, Mumbai. Sir completed PhD Technology Civil at VJTI, Mumbai, 2017. Sir had a four years field experience as a structural consultant. Sir designed many residential building and commercial building. Sir had published more than 15 publications in a different national and international journal and conference with more than 120 citations. Now, I would like to request Dr. S.V. Chaudhary sir to start the today's session. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for nice introduction. Welcome, Jay. Without much ado, please give me the um, sharing option. Yes, So um, uh, first of all, we will uh, go through a little faster uh, through some of the PPTs uh, where we will be able to learn what is Abacus and why it is needed and what are the advantages of it. And then We'll see some of the details of two case studies. Then we'll go to the directly to the software. And uh, then we will be able to see how the software can be used for modeling the concrete okay well uh, i think the screen is visible okay the flow just i told you uh, i'll okay now there are general softwares so many softwares are available like ensys which is known to almost everybody because uh, almost in all institution the ensys is already purchased uh, then there is Abacus, uh, then LS Dyna. This is best known for explicit dynamics and crash analysis. Then Comsol Multiphysics. Since um, uh, 15, 20 years, this Comsol is also uh, working very nicely. Then Midas Civil. Midas Civil is also a finite element analysis software. Midas has uh, many, many folds, like uh, it is design software also. Then MATLAB. MATLAB is also well known to almost all engineers because uh, uh, it, it has a great penetration in electronics and telecommunication branch. Okay, now why only Abacus we are talking about? Because almost all softwares are compatible with some minor differences. <clears throat> the best software is the one you know how to use well and which fits in your budget. That is very important. Abaka licensing has changed to extended token, which is way cheaper than NCs. So this is the major difference between Abacus and NCs. Also, NCs relies on 
partnership with Dyna for explicit analysis, whereas Abacus has it all integrated. You can switch from explicit, implicit between analysis steps in Abacus. Then NSYS Workbench is easier for beginners. However, difficult to get a really good message. If uh, you have used with Workbench, uh, NSYS Workbench, you will know this. In any case, you will have to use more professional measure, measure uh, like uh, hypermesh or uh, NSSA. Uh, this is hypermesh is a professional uh, model and meshing softwares. Separately, you will have to buy. In terms of industry, Abacus has a great pen, greater penetration in the automotive, while NCIS is preferred in energy sector. NCIS APDL interface is outdated by 20 years, whereas Abacus CAE is way better and more intuitive. NCIS parametric design language is still useful, though, but you can get the same result using Python with Abacus. <clears throat> we'll see the input file also. NCIS doesn't offer API, that is application programming interface, to interface with its result file, that is RST file. So if you are developing an application that depends on reading NCIS result, then it could be a pain. Abacus offers a very good API, so you don't need to worry about the details on how the database is structured. People prefer develop UMAT. This is one uh, programming you are supposed to write in uh, Fortran language or Python script, which, which will take care of uh, your material properties in Abacus. It is not needed to write it, but if you are changing the material properties frequently, then it will be better if you learn to write UMAT as a subroutine in Abacus. And my hint for good choice is have a look at the whole family and what else. So if you are along with product development, you will need optimization, fatigue, multi-body, CFD, explicit, acoustic, electromagnetics, etc. NCIS comes with CFX, Fluent, etc. But you have to pay for all of them separately, of course. Abacus comes with TOS CA, AFE Safe, Simpact, XFlow, XFEM, and you don't need to pay for all of them. It is worth mentioning that in aerospace, Nastran, some of you might be well versed with Nastran, is still the reference. And in academia, Comsol is getting better. So I initially I told you that Comsol is uh, 15, 20 years, it is very nice working. Uh, it is a multi-physics uh, programming. Now, modeling with, of concrete using Abacus, particularly, there are two methods uh, generally being adopted. One is concrete smear cracking and concrete damage plasticity. There is third one is also their brittle, uh, brittle material properties. But um, as I have not uh, gone through that bit and I have not used also. Now, if we look at smear crack concrete model, the concrete model is a smear crack model in the sense that it does not track individual macro crack. Constitutive calculations are performed independently at each integration point of the finite element model. Well, I forgot to tell you that uh, before using any one of these softwares, you need to have a fair knowledge of finite element method. Okay. The presence of cracks enters into these calculations by the way in which the crack affects the stress and material stiffness associated with integration point. The smear crack concrete model provides a general capability for modeling concrete 
in all types of structure, including beams, trusses, spheres, and solids, can be used for plain concrete, even though it is intended primarily for reinforced concrete. Can be used with rebar to model concrete reinforcement. Is designed for applications in which concrete is subjected to essentially monotonic straining. Okay. <clears throat> the model consists of an isotopically hardening yield surface that is active when the stress is dominantly compressive and an independent crack detection surface uses oriented damage elasticity concept that is smear cracking to describe the reversible part of the material's response after cracking failure requires that the linear elastic material model be used to define elastic properties. Now, tension stiffening. The post-failure behavior for direct straining across cracks is modeled with tension stiffening, which allows you to define strain softening behavior for crack model. So this is a graph showing tension stiffening model actually. When uh, we model a concrete and uh, when we when we draw the curve for um, tensile stress in concrete, when we uh, go on uh, uh, tensioning the concrete, it will show the linear behavior till the failure stress, and then after the softening process will start. That means the stress will go on decreasing while strain will go on increasing. At any point, you can unload it, but it will not be the same as what it was initially. And that shows that there is some degradation has happened. Then crack shear retention. As the concrete cracks, its shear stiffness is diminished. This effect is defined by specifying the reduction in the shear modulus as a function of opening strain across the crack. You can also specify the reduced shear modulus for closed cracks. Now, we will see one model, which is a concrete cube cube. A concrete cube of size 150 mm is modeled in abacus using C3D8 element. Now, this C3D8 means there are it is eight noded quantum element, <clears throat> and this 3D is three dimensional. A steel plate of thickness 25 mm is placed on top and at the bottom of cube to ensure the uniform distribution of the compressive load. The plate is also modeled with C3D8 element only. The plates are secured in place by using constraint type tie, which is available, readily available in a backers. The model, the material properties are used M30 grade concrete as per IS456, 2000 for concrete. Average compressive stress is uh, 30 MPa. Ultimate strain is 0.0035. And strain at peak stress that is epsilon zero dash that is 0.002. And this is that cube which is modeled by using abacus. And uh, these are the two plates. One is at top and one is at bottom. Uh, to provide the uniform pressure application on the cube and these are the boundary conditions seen and this this is the pressure applied we will see in actual uh, software also so there are two options by which material properties can be incorporated in for analysis in uh, abacus one is through cae by using direct software and one is through writing one input file that is uh, Python script. So in that we are supposed to use elastic option to give 
elastic properties and the concrete option to describe the compressive stress and strain relationship outside the elastic range means when the concrete enters in plastic range here plastic strain values not the total strain values are used to define the hardening behavior furthermore the first data pair must correspond with the onset of plasticity right the plastic strain value must be zero for the first pair then this is again the same tension stiffening which we have used in cube the choice of tension stiffening parameter is important in abacus standard since generally more tension stiffening makes it easier to obtain the numerical solution otherwise uh, the program will show some error or it will abort abruptly right too little tension stiffening will cause local cracking failure abacus plastic strain values not total strain values are used in defining hardening behavior furthermore the first data pair must correspond to the again the first value should be zero <clears throat> now values for concrete properties the numerical expressions has been developed by hogmestad and that the same uh, equations are used here uh, hogmestad made a two part of uh, concrete curve one is uh, for strain from 0 to epsilon dash 0 that is up to 0.002 which we have taken in the values um, from is uh, 456 uh, also same value here 0.002 up to this this curve is defined by this particular equation and this remaining portion when after it reaches its ultimate value the stress will go on decreasing while strain will go on increasing that portion is defined by this particular formula so combining both of them this curve is created and the total strain is uh, uh, having two component one is uh, elastic component of strain and one is plastic component of strain the failure ratios the ratio of the ultimate biaxial compressive stress to uniaxial compressive ultimate stress that default value is 1.16 absolute value of the ratio of uniaxial tensile stress at failure to the uniaxial compressive stress at failure that is 3 upon 30 that is 10% that is 0.1 whereas default value is 0.09 ratio of magnitude of a principal component of plastic strain at ultimate stress in biaxial compression to the plastic strain at ultimate stress in uniaxial comp compression the default value is 1.28 the ratio of tensile principal stress value at cracking in plane stress when the other non zero principal stress component is at the ultimate compressive stress value to the tensile cracking stress under uniaxial tension default value is 1 by 3 tension stiffening the numerical simulation can be represented either by modifying stiffness of reinforcing bar or by modifying the stiffness of concrete so that the concrete can carry tensile force after crack the value of 0.002 is adopted for this analysis because we have not modeled any rebar in this the shear retention this option is used to give a multiplying factor rho that defines the modulus of shearing crack as a fraction of elastic shear modulus of uncracked concrete the first value is 1 and the second value is very large number we have taken 10000 and these are the results after analysis uh, the results are when we have um, um, gone for mesh sensitivity so at um, uh, mesh uh, when 25 mm mesh was there the behavior was almost reached at 30 when it was reduced to 18.75 it is uh, still nearby and at 15 it is 
almost touching the 30, which is a, the optimum value for our uh, design. And mesh 10, again, it reduces. So optimum mesh value is 15, we can say. We'll see this how to model in actual abacus software also. Now, damage plasticity approach. The concrete damage plasticity model is a continuum damage model for concrete based on plasticity. The two main failure mechanisms, tensile cracking and compressive crushing of concrete material, are assumed in this model. The evolution of field or failure surface is controlled by two hardening variables tensile equivalent plastic strength, that is epsilon T plastic, and compressive equivalent plastic strength, that is epsilon C plastic. Linked to failure mechanism under tension and compression loading, respectively. Here it is depicted by using this is uniaxial tension. Here also it is linear up to the failure uh, stress and then softening starts. In this case, softening is in the form of a curve, not a straight line. Uniaxial compression is also up to certain level. We know that initially concrete is linearly behavior, showing the linear behavior. So up to this level, it is linear. Then after it enters into nonlinear and when it reaches ultimate value, then after the softening behavior of concrete in compression also will start and which is also nonlinear. So in all, we can conclude that concrete is nonlinear material. The model converts the stress strain curve into stress versus strain curve using user provided stress versus inelastic strain data. The concrete specimen is unloaded from any point on strain softening branch of stress strain curve. The unloading response is weakened. That uh, we will go back. See, the unloading response is weakened. We can see here, if we start unloading from this point, then it will not behave like this. It is not showing parallel thing, but it is the gradient is decreased. And because of that, this one parameter is introduced to model this particular thing. That means the elastic stiffness of the material is damaged. The degradation of elastic stiffness is characterized by two damage variables, that is DT in tensile case and DC in compression case. The damage variables can take values from zero for undamaged material to one for total loss of strength. Means if this value DC or DT is equal to one, that means it has lost completely. If E0 is the initial undamaged elastic stiffness of the material, then the stress strain relation under uniaxial tension and compression loading are, this, these are the equations given in Abacus literature only, which we will have to use and it is used. With this modeling approach, the concrete behavior is considered independently of the rebar. So both are separate. Effect associated with rebar concrete interface, such as bond, sleep, and dovel action are modeled approximately by introducing tension stiffening into concrete modeling to simulate load transfer across cracks through the rebar. Tension stiffening is required in concrete damage plasticity model. The tension stiffening can be specified by means of post-failure stress strain relation or by applying fracture energy cracking criteria. So this is the same thing. Earlier we have seen this graph. So up to this, when we, if we say we are unloading from this point, then the behavior will be like this. Now let us have a look on nonlinear analysis of an reinforced concrete beam using 
concrete damage plasticity approach. So this is the beam. This beam actually was uh, uh, analyzed by Buckhaus um, many, many years before. And uh, he has uh, constructed this uh, beam in the laboratory and applied the loads and up to failure and noted down the results. Then after Walensky modeled this beam in the NCs and uh, given some results. And after that, uh, I modeled it in, in Abacus and compared with the Walensky's and Buckhaus results. So the beam is a very simple, simply supported beam actually. It is four, four, five, seven, two, and uh, seven, six, two, and this, these values. Jan, why uh, one may ask me question? Why we, um, these values are not in the full uh, number? Because uh, these are converted from uh, inches to millimeters, and uh, because of that, these values are like this. So uh, to match with the work done with uh, the researchers uh, like uh, Wolanski and uh, Buckhaus. And material property, also these are from uh, pound per square inch to the MPA. So characteristic strength of concrete at 28 days is taken as 33.095. Modulus of elasticity was calculated from this. So it has uh, 27,227.9 MPA. Poison's ratio is 0 0.3. Uh, this is same because it is a ratio. Uni-XL tensile cracking stress is 3.585 MPA. Modulus of elasticity for steel, it is uh, 200,000 MPA. Poison's ratio for steel again 0.3 is taken. Yield stress is 414 for steel. Now, it's a stress strain diagram for concrete was taken from McGregor's work. McGregor has given only one formula to uh, model the concrete. This formula takes care of uh, entire behavior of uh, concrete from zero till ultimate value and the softening that that means in plastic zone also so here this formula is very easy in in front of hognestad formula so this formula shows uh, where epsilon is the strain at uh, particular uh, stress and epsilon zero is strain at ultimate compressive strain that is 0 0.002 uh, sorry 0 0.0035 Okay, then the properties uh, for uh, these are again um, come, coming back to we have here we are supposed to take dilation angle. This dilation angle is nothing but when the concrete enters into plastic zone, then internal friction will uh, come into picture, and at that very time, with the uh, plastic plane will make one angle with the x axis that angle is uh, this dilation angle actually flow potential is 0.1 then uh, this is default value we have seen in smeared crack this is also default value here viscosity parameter viscosity parameter is taken here 0.1 and this viscosity parameter also plays a very good um, role in con converging your um, uh, analysis so when we get the absurd answers, we are supposed to change the viscosity parameter. Uh, you can reduce and then optimum value you are supposed to calculate. This is compressive hardening. How we are supposed to calculate that we will see. Then concrete compression damage. This is DC. Then tension stiffening this concrete tension stiffening and uh, concrete tension damage, this is DT. This is uh, taken from the work of Quack. Properties of steel, this is very simple. <clears throat> As um, when 
we see through our um, IS-456 uh, for floor steel that uh, initial part of the initial part of the um, steel is straight line and then it is also a straight line. Therefore, at this level, it is 415 and even at this level, it is 415, but the strain will change. So that value is assumed as 0 0.001744. And these are the uh, model diagram. You can see here that uh, a reinforcement is also modeled in this. These are the bottom reinforcement uh, bars. These are the stirrups. These are the stirrups. And this is the top bar. Then this is the plate to apply the load. And this is mesh part. Here, only one fourth of the uh, model, uh, one fourth of the beam is modeled because of symmetry to reduce the workload on computer and time also. Then if we look at the result, then at first crack, the values of Walensky and my values are not exactly matching, but at failure, the values are matching very nicely. So we can say, that it is working very nicely. Well, so this is this was the modeling of concrete using abacus. I have tried to put uh, whatever is possible in this um, particular um, presentation, but there are almost um, eight to nine books uh, as a literature given for uh, abacus and uh, as and when which, which is uh, required that we can use. I'll uh, first let me show you that literature and then we'll go back to documentation as well. Well, let me share the screen again. Okay, is it visible? So if you can see the, these are online uh, references available to learn Abacus. You can uh, see this if I open this in uh, new window then uh, I'll be able to show you, yes. Just a moment, let me allow it, okay. Okay, now see in this, this is one book. So it has so many things, how to use the guide in this working with Abacus, all the things you will find it is very, very easy to learn this. This you need not to rely on anybody and uh, you yourself can learn this very nicely. Everything is explained and this, this is, this is what is the, uh, beauty of Abacus, then modeling techniques. And at the end, when you will see this uh, you, using plugin, and this is the first book which uh, I'm showing here. So, what are the plugins? And all those things are explained very, very nicely. Okay, now there are certain keywords, so you can use the keywords also. Keyword reference guide is there. So when you come across with the keyword, you always can use these keywords as uh, suppose this is 
concrete damage plasticity if you want to see so this is that concrete damage plasticity okay you can go to each and every thing is clearly mentioned and this uh, right now i am using abacus 14 uh, abacus 14 student version anybody can go to um, simulia site register yourself and download a student version which is freely available for teaching community so right now abacus 2020 is available you can download it and see yourself uh, but there is a limitation for student version only thousand nodes can be modeled but in thousand nodes we can uh, learn almost everything in abacus only thing we will not be able to go for mesh sensitivity analysis where uh, we need to go for more than 1000 nodes okay let let me show you the actual software okay and then let, uh, let me share this screen again So is it visible, sir? Yes, sir. And now, um, here, see this uh, concrete is uh, cube is modeled. We have 15, sorry, one, 150 by 150 by 150, which is a standard uh, model we have. So how to model a this cube, let us uh, understand. So I'll uh, model one more thing and we'll show you how easy it is. So third part, there are two parts. One is a cube and one is plate. So uh, now I'm uh, for demonstrating only demonstrating purpose. I, I'll uh, model here one, one more part that is, uh, let me keep the name as the part three itself. We will be using extrusion three dimensional and solid so i'll say continue and this window will open see very very simple now we want to model a cube so that uh, little autocad knowledge we all have so i'll take this rectangle and will select zero zero or i can give here zero comma zero and enter this is already has come and now my value is 150 comma 150. Okay, it is already created. So 150 comma 150 and this is already done. So I'll say done. And the moment I'll say done, it will prompt me to the base extrusion and where I'll write 150 and simply say, okay, and Immediately, I'll get 150 by 150 by 150 cube. So this is this um, facility is not available. Uh, at least I don't know in other uh, softwares. Uh, so quickly you can uh, create your model. Once the model is created, okay. Once the model is created, then we will go to create the material that is. Uh, we we will have to go for its material so i'll show you the material this and uh, one pop up window will open here and see we are using for this smear crack uh, concrete smear cracking so first we will go for elastic in elastic we will enter the young's modulus and poison's ratio so after entering this we will select in mechanical, in plasticity, and there we have two options, which are concrete smear cracking and concrete damage plasticity. Once we click this concrete smear cracking, it will open this here. Once this uh, smear cracking is done, then we are supposed to give these two values, compressive stress and plastic strain. Now, from where this compressive stress and comp plastic strain we are supposed to take, that we will see one 
one of the excel sheet which i have already prepared and that i'll explain after a while then we are supposed to go for sub option so these sub options are failure ratio shear retention and tension stiffening so we'll go to failure ratio this pop up window is open and we have seen this ratio that is 1.16 and 0.1 then 1.28 and 1 by 3 that is 0.333 these ratios we have already discussed then i'll say cancel then we'll go to shear retention so first value of rho for closed crack is 1 and for open that is very big value that is 10000 we have taken okay then for tension stiffening here because we are not using rebar so the first value is for 1 it is 0 and for 0 it is 0.002 okay and this way we have given all the values for the um, this particular uh, concrete material it is asking whether to save or not so i'll say no i'll say no okay then we will model the steel for steel because we are putting the plate and plate is not playing any role in analysis so therefore we will put only elastic and young's modulus and position ratio and will say okay okay then after we will create the section so we have two things one is cube and one is plate so let us create the section means in this we are supposed to define the material it will prompt us which material you are using so we will say concrete and we can take or otherwise you can create material here itself and this will open one window and the same window and we are supposed to enter the values of compressive strain and plastic stress okay then similar thing is for steel here only because steel is not taking any part so uh, young's modulus and the poisson's ratio once the se sections are sections are defined so here it will prompt steel or concrete so we will choose steel and we'll go then we'll go to assembly in assembly there are tools available so these tools are available like this is create an instance and those instances instances means there are three instances one is cube and another one is plate the other plate is copied so create instance so we will create the instance by copying this okay then we will put we can put in linear pattern or we can put it in uh, radial pattern or we can translate or we can rotate or translate to something else like this all facilities are available this facilities you will have to work on because uh, even if i tell you something like this uh, you will not be able to remember but when you will work it work on it you will be able to remember this then after assembly we will go for meshing we can mesh the entire um, uh, tube and plate separately then we can see here uh, there are controls okay it will okay okay so you can select the okay again it is not thing we will have to okay we we'll let let me take the part 3 uh, third part where we will be able to mesh it so uh, okay so this is unmeshed one the color is green so we can mesh it here i'll go for so okay uh, what is the approximate size so we can say 15 whatever the size we want to keep instead of 15 let me put 20 that is also okay but uh, 150 divided by 20 will not give us the full value so let it be 15 only and 
if I say okay, then it will show me the points marked on the edges. Okay, then we'll go for element type. So which element type I'll be using? So 3D stress element I'll be using and C3D8, eight noded linear brick element we will be using. So if you want to use linear, otherwise we, we can use quadratic. Then we are supposed to specify viscosity, element deletion and degradation. So instead that we will go for linear itself and we'll say uh, not hybrid, not reduced or anything. And we will be using C3D8 and we'll say, okay. So that element is done. Now we will say mesh it. So let us say mesh. So it will prompt me, okay to mesh part. I'll say yes and it is mesh. So uh, see the how simple it is to mesh. We are selecting the uh, element. We are selecting the size of element and we are meshing. And so nicely it is meshed. You can use remesh. You can seed the part. It will ask you when I, if I'll change this instead of one fifth. Huh? On, okay. Instead of 15, let, let me say 50. Then it will ask me whether you want to delete this mesh earlier one. So I'll say delete. So the entire thing will get deleted and only 50 size mesh is there. And when I'll say mesh the part, it will again ask me yes and it is mesh. Okay, so this way you can use it very, very simply. Once all these things are done, then we will go to the boundary conditions and load. So we will go to constraint. So what are here only while assembling, we will go to constraint. So bottom plate, which is selected and see it is selected and tie type is already used. It will prompt to which type of constraint you, you want. So we will select the tie and we'll say, and it is automatically getting, just you are supposed to select the surfaces. So to select the surface here, you can turn it very simply. You can select the surface. Okay, so it is very, very simple to work with abacus. Okay. That is again done. Then we'll go to boundary condition. Boundary condition is only one here uh, given. So we'll say that boundary condition, what are the types of boundary condition? So it will prompt us and here we have uh, selected N caster. N caster means fixed. All in all directions, the displacement is restricted. So this is N caster is selected and uh, it is showing you the symbol is, okay. Then after we'll go to load. In load, it just you will have to select the surface and say the type of loading. The type of loading is pressure because we are giving uniform pressure on entire plate and magnitude is given 50 because we want to see whether our concrete is failing at 30 because we have given the properties as maximum 30, right? So we'll say just, okay. And once this is done, then we will go for a job. That job will be created. Let us call it as job two, then it will continue. Here you want to give description, give or otherwise say, okay. And job two is created. When we'll go to this, the job two is prompting us, just say submit. Once you submit, the history output uh, is not then okay. We'll say, yes, it is submitted. And 
you can monitor so one by one it will show you how it is uh, working with steps so some of the warnings are there you can see those warnings and it says that it is aborted because we have not missed that uh, part 3 properly and uh, it is not added in assembly so let it be okay so whatever is uh, done with the earlier model that uh, i'll show you the result of that okay so i will say result and visualization where it has gone okay yes okay so here <clears throat> uh when we want to see our uh, model exactly so this is that model and i have given the numbers to the elements all the elements are numbered to do that you can click here just go to label and select or unselect i am unselecting it and will say apply numbers are gone i'll say select again and say apply numbers will reappear okay now we want to see uh, what has happened to this uh, uh, concrete after labels let me put this labels off okay so here it is clearly shown everything what whatever we will select in the step um, that i want um, stresses i want um, uh, strains i want reactions all those things will appear here in primary or these are deformed primary and symbol right here i am selecting the stress and i am selecting s22 now this s22 s11 and s33 are x y and z 11 is along x 22 is along y and 33 is along z so if i am selecting 11 then there will be very very small stress this is a stress here Uh, and there are there are no stresses in uh, x direction if i'll select 3 3 still the similar thing but if i'll select 2 2 then the entire thing is in under stress because we have given only vertical loading in this case this lesion shows what is the stress at different points right and if we see the analysis is aborted because we have given 50 as the total load but 30 is the only capacity we have defined through our material property and because of that it has to abort when it reaches 30 and beyond okay so now i want to uh, see in internal part so when we will click this it will show us internal parts if i will click here so we will be able to make this according to our requirement so here you can select the internal nodes internal elements also right now if we want to see in y plane so that y plane is also available if you want to see in z plane so z plane is also available see how the crack is showing this element is deformed right if i don't want to see this then only one plane i will be able to see okay i am keeping this and uh, will go in 
x direction only and if i so it will become hollow so only you can only internal things if suppose there is some bars or something then we will be able to see that also right so these these way we will be able to create whatever the type of result we want that we can see here right now i i will uh, click and will say odp field output i want history output we have not given so field output and will say continue and it will ask me what you want to see right so i'll just simply say i want to see stresses in y direction and i'll click that and it will prompt here and where you want to see i'll say i want to see at a particular node so i'll select unique nodal if you want to see at, at centroid if you want to see element nodal or integration point whole element anything is possible but i want to see at unique node so i'll go to the element node and will say node uh, i want to see at particular label let us enter 25 as the label of node and will say plot so the plot is created now this is showing in negative values in abacus abacus com compression is negative tension is positive so these values are in negative so we are supposed to and if you can see it is showing as a straight line up to this and then it is entering into the plastic zone by, and it is nearly reached 30 see it is almost 30 you can see it okay so whether it is almost 30 or not that we will see uh, by clicking this i'll say edit and whatever the points are here those points i'll be able to say shift n and control c once this is copied i'll go to the excel sheet and will in excel sheet i'll paste that data here because we we are familiar with uh, all positive values so converted it into positive this is placed here and this is um, converted by multiplying this value with a negative sign and then a uh, graph is plotted here we can see that what is the maximum value it reached it has reached 29.3881 29.3967 that is the maximum value it reached and this is that graph the same same graph we have so and then we are supposed to because it, it is not showing the exact behavior then in that case you are supposed to change many parameters and trial and error is there then uh, for viscosity parameter you are supposed to change and go on uh, using the same procedure plot the graph and finally you will reach to the conclusion that at viscosity this much of viscosity this much of dilation angle and this much of ratios it gives a perfect value which we have seen in the presentation okay so this is one and when we want to okay stop sharing well quickly i will show when we will be able to
Yes. See, this is one uh, reinforced uh, concrete beam is uh, modeled here. And uh, if uh, we see that this is bar one, this is bar two, bars are all same. Then concrete beam, this is again, you can model very, very quickly. As I have shown in the cube case, then there is a plate, this, this plate for loading and support and stir up. This one stir up is uh, um, done. And then uh, again, similar. Now here we are using material uh, as a concrete plasticity, damage plasticity. So let me show you. Uh, okay, material properties. So stop sharing, that is very important. So let me uh, show you that first. Okay, material property. Well, so this is the formula given by McGregor, the single formula. And as uh, from zero, a strain value selected from zero uh, and uh, 0 0.0001 and with the increment of 0 0.0001, it has uh, gone up to 0 0.00, 0 0.0206. And then after that, selecting that, this is, um, it has put the value, the formula is applied and these values are calculated by using the same formula. If we see here, it is giving us this value and um, these two value uh, that is epsilon zero and uh, uh, your um, Young's modulus and it calculates all the values. Once these values are calculated, then we will calculate the elastic strain. What is elastic strain? Elastic strain is nothing but the stress divided by Young's modulus. And that is already done here. See Young's modulus is there and it is divided with this value and we got the elastic strain. Now, after this elastic strain, we will calculate the inelastic strain. What is inelastic strain? The total strain minus elastic strain. So that is total strain minus elastic strain, this value, right? Then, in elastic strain for first value up to this it is showing linearity so therefore we will neglect all these values and when it is entering into plastic zone that value we are taking and that first value of in elastic strain should be zero so it is zero right first value and the stress is whatever the stress at that very particular point then D damage, uh, damage uh, DC is uh, taken here with that formula we have seen in a presentation that formula is entered here and uh, that value for all these whatever these values are given of uh, stress and inelastic strain that is taken and these values are calculated. Then plastic strain, what is plastic strain? That is nothing but this again there is a formula and that plastic strain is calculated. So inelastic strain, plastic strain, everything is now available with us. Okay. Now, if we go to the, uh, another uh, thing which is known as tension damage, that is tension stiffening. This tension stiffening is uh, taken with the formula given by Quack, and that is concrete tension. If I go to tension, this is this is that formula. This formula is a empirical formula, and uh, the values are being used in pound and inches. So that was uh, another pain for us to convert this into the desired values, and this these values are calculated using this is 0 0.99, that is instead of one. At one, it will touch the x, uh, axis, so taken as 0 0.99, and then 0 0.1, well, uh, this is 
and 0 and accordingly this strain is calculated from here with the help of this formula and that strain is taken okay and these all values once it is ready this is actually i have programmed this um, particular uh, excel sheet so if i change only uh, the parameters these parameters it entire thing will change and i'll get the values for desired material okay now we'll go back to yes we'll go back to the yes and now once this is done the material properties when we will provide so in this material property we are supposed to take care that density now here the entire beam is getting model so we will provide all the values like density density is uh, uh, we know 24 kilo newton per meter cube right so here everything is in mm so everything is converted into mm because abacus doesn't have any unit you are supposed to be very very careful about the units so be consistent in units so everything is newton uh, and mm so it is converted into newton and mm then then the elastic value that is young's modulus and poisson's ratio then concrete damage plasticity so th these values we know we have uh, taken these values uh, again the same eccentricity and all these things we have discussed then compressive behavior just now ill strain and elastic strain we have just we have uh, discussed this and then here compression damage then this compression damage is also provided right the uh, initial values are zero and then later values are given from that excel sheet then for temp tensile behavior in tensile behavior also the tensile stress and strain cracking strain we call it and then tension damage is nothing but the tension steepening that is all these values are provided okay once these values are provided then here okay then plasticity compressive behavior everything is done okay so once this is done we will go to the steel in steel also we are supposed to provide the values the density is provided in newton and mm then elasticity that is young's modulus and poison ratio then plastic behavior plastic behavior just i have explained that we are taking uh, is456 so according to that it is a straight line so that values are given and then we will go for the section section is nothing but we are supposed to select uh, the elements we have created one by one and give their um, material properties then we'll go for assembly in assembly we are uh, as uh, in assembly we have assembled all these uh, values uh, sorry models one by one and appropriate places for the for doing so you must be very very perfect in geometry all the points you are supposed to calculate because it will take the value and once the value is put the element will fit in that directly okay so it is it is a matter of uh, uh, time consuming matter and uh, if you do not have that geometry with you then you will have to stop here and then create all the points and know all the geometry and then put right so there are instances so stirrups are then multiple stirrups um, by using this uh, command linear pattern command the multiple stirrups one is from here till here at equal distance you can provide or if the de in design the stirrups um, dimensions uh, or uh, spacing is less near the support then that also you can provide okay then 
boundary conditions the boundary conditions are in tip of loading it will come so boundary condition because it is one fourth model quarter model only quarter beam is uh, analyzed so half of that uh, the portion beyond this so here it is considered as fixed right this is also fixed whereas this is simply supported right so that way at center and at support and z0 means here it is z equal to 0 in this direction z equal to the half width of the b so z0 position is also uh, boundary condition given then loads are provided on this plate and then jobs are created so here 11 jobs are created to get the accurate values uh here i will not be able to show you because uh, that odb is uh, that result file uh, which is uh, we, uh, after analysis it creates one odb file and that odb file uh, there are two thing it is very vast very big more than 2 gb uh, file is there and uh, um because this is a student version and this is modeled with so many nodes it is a very small mesh because this i have analyzed in widget uh, here on the on the license version with the permission of the institute so it will be seen on license version only so for this matter i am so sorry i'll not be able to show you this but how to model you can model it by using uh, the less number of um, elements and nodes and you can use it so that is all from my side in conclusion uh, i can say only this is uh, i tried to bring everything in one and half hour that is uh, almost impossible i tried my level best i don't know how far uh, you have uh, received it but this is uh, a fair trial given by me so i'll stop here if anybody has uh, any question then i'll try my level best sir over to you okay sir if any participant have any question then ask to sir sir i think that no questions are arise just from the participant thank you sir for uh, such a wonderful information which are covered under the simulation of a concrete using abacus which are helpful for the future expansion of a concrete technology thanks a lot sir from the bioc of yashwantra gosle polytechnic sampur thank you sir welcome sir